well uh, the only story uh, like uh, uh, his earlier novel and uh, julian barnes earlier novel like the sense of an ending also uh, this uh, novel also makes a very interesting uh, critic of marriage institution uh, the critic of uh, marriage institution it tries to uh, uh, make here so uh, this uh, work uh, makes uh, this critic of uh, marriage uh, institution so it seems uh, like when we study this novel uh, or the earlier one also uh, it tries to speak about uh, uh, a sham of marriage institution uh, sham sham s h a m sham means fakeness uh, the fakeness that is uh, in marriage institution that uh, uh, we see here Uh, so uh, there is another quote also that we see that uh, you are an absolutist for love you are an absolutist for love and therefore an absolutist against marriage <laughs> so it seems to see that well love and marriage is opposites <laughs> not only in the memes and the jokes <laughs> that uh, people say that the end of the man is marriage <laughs> end of the man <laughs> and uh, uh, means a uh, aim aim of human beings ultimately is what it is marriage we think like we are we are in, in uh, this life where there is birth and then there is death two points of life birth and death and the third very important point in life is marriage so as if we all are born to marry and then to die so birth and death are inevitable inevitable and marriage is also as something become inevitable by our cultural conditioning or a life of a culture that we live and and so many writers many writers had always question the very concept of marriage the institution of marriage earlier when we studied jude the obscure by thomas hardy he also had question the marriage institution in a different way where jude is living with susan susan who is already married to philotson but still after taking a permission from philotson lays uh, lives with uh, with jude also has children also and and uh, obviously victorian society was very disturbed to see that somebody can write such a story uh, about uh, for, for falling out of marriage institution well we are not now in victorian society today when like in 2018 when julian barnes is writing this novel or now people obviously or at least the western societies uh, have have, have al already done with marriage institution and lots of alternatives to marriage institution is given like live in relations or an easy easy exit from marriage we call it divorce so now we have legal provisions and we don't even attach lots of cultural baggage or ethical baggage or morality if somebody is falling out of marriage or going for a divorce also so things are rather accepted now in, in even in Uh, uh, the other countries also, if if we consider India uh, as not as open as the Western uh, societies, that even in India we do allow that kind of life at least to celebrities. We may not perhaps allow this freedom to any layman, but celebrities, film stars, cricketers, uh, politicians, those who are living a high kind of a life, they all may marry and then leave their wives and move on. and we move on and we pardon them we don't say that well you should be into a marriage you should be faithful to your wife or husband and you have to be responsible for whatever happens to your wife or to your husband well we don't rather question all those things now so that itself says that marriage is an institution we look in a much different way so here again here in the story of love which the central theme is love uh, julian barnes brings that idea that perhaps love and marriage are opposite and so it is not only the aim but it is it is uh, ant also and uh, means ant <laughs> marriage is the ant ant of if not life of love <laughs> people would say marriage is the end of love <laughs> it is not only the end of human being it's not the aim of that but it also uh, goes on uh, our our comedies comedies normally end with marriage comedies end with marriage that's why they are comedy that's why we call sukhant now if it continues after marriage it will turn into dukhant <laughs> so it is better that the story ends with marriage 
but life doesn't end with marriage <laughs> life has to go on <laughs> love has to end but life has to go and then what happens is there is lots of uh, uh, strife uh, marital strife which may lead to gordon's life like domestic violence or other form but at least people realize that now there is perhaps no love which was before uh, a marriage then so this quote uh, absolutist in love and so you are always against marriage as if you see that marriage is the end of love it's not possible that one can continue loving each other the way they were after marriage so that is uh, where the, the very idea of marriage institution is criticized and a very interesting way huh, this this novel tries to look at huh, this this point some of the quotes are quite funny also and some of the the quotes one, one of the quotes in the earlier novel that is the sense of an ending uh, it says that uh, it goes back to that quote that uh, marriage marriage is uh, is is something where uh, where uh, uh, pudding is served before normally we have desserts at the end but marriage is such, such a kind of a buffet where the sweet is served first and then you go for those things which you don't like and like we start normal food with appetizer like soup is an appetizer so that you get hungry so then in marriage later on people get hungry and so like suzanne is hungry at 48 and and and, and a kind of a light then they go for the other thing then so it's it's a quite an opposite of what normal happens in a normal food or a buffet from soup to dessert yet there is dessert to soup that is in sense of an ending he gave that thing and then another one like you you have given the matter much thought and come up with many fanciful comparisons as julian barnes writes here marriage is a dog kennel in which complacency lives and is never chained up complacency at like santosh the prakar પછી એક વખત તમે બંધાઈ ગયા પછી હવે શાંતિથી જીવતું રહેવું પડે દિવસો કાઢવા પડે ભલે એમાં કોઈ ચેઇન નથી તો પણ બંધાઈને રહેવું પડે ના દેન યુ કાન કીપ ઓન જમ્પિંગ ઓફ સો ડોગ કેનલ અ પ્લેસ વેર ધ ડોગ લીવ એન્ડ ડોગ ઇઝ નોટ ચેઇન એન્ડ યેટ વુડ ગો દેર એન્ડ સ્લીપ વુડ સ્ટે દેર લાઈક પ્લુટો ઇફ યુ રિમેમ્બર ડિઝની વોલ્ટ ડિઝની pluto and then there is a dog kennel where the dog would live so it is a marriage is a kind of a dog kennel where uh, complacency lives uh, and uh, even if it is not chained up uh, would live there marriage is a jewelry box which uh, by some mysterious opposite of alchemy turns gold silver diamonds back into base metal <laughs> or paste or quartz so uh, it is a kind of a marriage box ek eva prakar no marriage box che કે એમાં એક એવા કેમિકલ છે કે પેલું સોનું હોય સિલ્વર હોય ડાયમંડ હોય એને સાદું મેટલ બનાવી દે એને સાદા મેટલમાં કન્વર્ટ કરી દે મેરેજ ઇઝ સચ કાઇન્ડ ઓફ એ જ્વેલરી બોક્સ એટલે જે પેલા કિંમતી ઘરેણા છે એ બધા સાદા બની જાય મેરેજ બોક્સમાં ગયા પછી સો દેટ ઇઝ અનધર ફેન્સીફુલ ડેફિનેશન ઇટ ગીવ્સ મેરેજ ઇઝ એઝ ડિસયુઝ બોટ હાઉસ ઓર નોન યુઝ બોટ હાઉસ containing an old two person canoe no longer water worthy with holes in the bottom and one missing paddle so this is something like a, normally in a boat there are small uh, uh, paddle boats small canoe we call it where you can row the thing and so uh, when there is a crisis you can bring down that boat and you can row uh, uh, it off uh, and move on to a better place or if you want to go deep into water in a big boat and then if you want to just have an excursion then you bring down the smaller boat uh, there but normally when there is a crisis then you use this boat so canoe boat uh, 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 for this but then it is it is lying there for such a long time that it has already got uh, holes at the bottom it is not at all water worthy and then if you will put it out in the moment of crisis to escape from the boat house or from the marriage you will sink down <laughs> because that canoe will not be uh, drivable or it will not be floatable <laughs> already it is already rotten uh, there so that is how people say that well there is a divorce one can go for that but then one never goes for that because there is complacency uh, that remains and then people continue susan is living that kind of life uh, even when paul says that why don't you divorce and let us marry he once proposed also uh that which obviously paul is is in doubt that why i proposed to her 
uh, and and had she accepted the proposal then <laughs> the life would be even more terrible <laughs> then you can't pack the parcel and hand it to daughter <laughs> that now take care of this parcel now she is your wife now you can't do that so well, is surprised that well i proposed one but it was good that it was not accepted <laughs> otherwise life would have brought more tragedies also so that is how uh, he looks at this marriage or uh, and says that dozens of such comparisons to to hand uh, into those uh, things there uh, there are bad marriages or at least whatever marriages are there they are they have some problems uh, are there uh, maybe in julian barnes reason uh, 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 obviously from his personal life we don't know many things he is not a kind of an author who who would live very open life like most of the writers nowadays live uh, very active on social media they keep on giving interviews like we have seen amitav ghosh chetan bhagat arundhati roy you google and you find so many interviews talking a lot about their personal life uh, uh, as a part of marketing and other things also but julian barnes uh, is not such a kind of person that his life is so open to everybody he, he might be giving interviews but not about personal life uh, as such uh, so people in a way don't know much but whatever people know that his marriage life was not that unhappy also it is not that the unhappy aspect of the marriage is also known to everybody like when we studied t s eliot we studied t s eliot and when we were doing autobiographical study of t s eliot if you remember during our discussion of the westland we have seen that uh, he had a problem with the sexual misbehavior of women sexual misbehavior of women and so uh, uh, he has portrayed uh, uh, sexual degeneration and lot many women who come into uh, the uh, the the poem which had a, a problem with their sexual life or they are betraying their relations uh, that was one of the concern uh, there uh, now then we were not thinking that this is because of his personal life later on we realized that his wife was not having a good relation with as eliot at least physically T.S. Eliot was rather uh, not having a good healthy condition to build a, a, a physical relation with wife, and maybe because of that, maybe yeah, because of that, the wife was having affairs with other men yeah, uh, there, and so this was very personal reason. It doesn't mean that the entire European civilization is rotten and there is sexual perversion, and it is because of spiritual uh, dearth that is being faced there. so in autobiographical reading we have seen that well it was very much a personal but it came much later on after his death after 20 30 years it is almost in 1970s when diaries and letters came then people realized this that there was such a kind of a relation between ts eliot and his uh, wife we don't know much of those things about julian barnes life that why why he had a problem with marriage institution whatever we know he might have a good healthy relation at least uh, the unhappiness is not much talked about uh, uh, his life but but the way he questions uh, the very idea about marriage institution in uh, either sense of an ending or this is quite alarming also to see that he might have uh, m- might not have a, a better way of looking as a marriage as a solution to the human happiness uh, perhaps it is not the ultimate solution of uh, human uh, happiness so uh in a bad marriages in this novel uh, the best example is uh, susan and gordon and several references come that gordon is very violent uh, very violent uh, with uh, susan and yet uh, susan keeps on living that life without telling anybody else that she is having a very bad uh, a bad uh, life uh, and husband is so torturous uh and and he is drinking too much doing physical violence and other things there and uh, julian barnes or paul paul roberts tells us that this is the problem with uh, english middle class english middle class because they want to be complacent and they don't want to tell people that we are unhappy they want to say that well, we are very happy <laughs> everything is okay with us there is no problem and so middle class english people would never talk about this they 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 will keep on suffering silently in their homes but never utter a word against that so his rather problem is with this middle class complacency middle class mediocrity being average in life that is the, one of the character traits of the middle class english people that is what perhaps he is trying to attack that if there are this kind of violences why would people not come out and speak about those uh, things there 
Uh, in Paul's parents' case, it is not like they are having a fight or they do all such kind of things. But Paul, after studying Gordon and Susan, started reading the parents also. And then you would say, well, they also are not having like a happy relation. They are people staying together, but it doesn't mean that like what happens in love is like people constantly speak of talking about chand tare tod ke le aunga, what do you want tum? Uh, uh, pani mango me dud dunga. <laughs> All those kind of thing normally husband wife don't do. And if they do, then also it looks very awkward. But a 19 year old person entering into a life of love and all those romantic ideas seen in books and cinema <laughs> and would say that well people in love behave eh, in all this manner married couples don't behave in that <laughs> well obviously they don't behave <laughs> in that uh, uh, way uh, so people easily identify eh, people from whether this couple is married couple or they are lovers <laughs> from the way they behave like husband would be carrying purse in the hand, well, they might be in love still. <laughs> but then later on, when uh, the wife is carrying some children, some baggage in the bag, then they are married. Uh, the visual image clearly tells <laughs> that about whether they are lovers or uh, they are married uh, couple. But Paul is trying to look and uh, observe parents. Uh, and obviously, we'll say that well, they also don't seem to be happy in that relation. They are just carrying on, uh, they, they, like as if lifting each other's burden. <laughs> and they are carrying on. Uh, that is how he looks. But well, that perhaps itself is a marriage. Marriage is not about love. It is beyond those things. It is where, where the love and the responsibilities begin. And marriage is more about responsibilities rather than that careless love or carefree behavior that becomes a trademark of uh, uh, being in love uh, also. So this all uh, John's life also uh, speaks about uh, because uh, uh, John was in affair with a rich person. Uh, and we can imagine that what kind of life he might be having, that wife, that relation, that broken, uh, broken marriage, and also having affair with so many women. And he offers homes to all these women to stay with whomsoever he has affair. And then he is going for divorce and not, not marrying John, but somebody else now. <laughs> and so that again is an episode of, of that. One of the friend, uh, he says that one of my friend had a more, more clear idea about marriage. Paul is telling us uh, this and says this, uh, that I remember a women friend uh, 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 once. Now, now, this again is a very interesting expression, uh, women friend. When, when you are young, you have a girlfriend. But when you are old, you have a women friend. Uh, Paul is 70 years old person. He won't have a girlfriend now. So this expression of women friend is also very interesting because it comes from an old man who tells that. Uh, so a women friend once telling me her theory of marriage. Theory of marriage. Now, this again is very interesting. Eh? That people might have a theory of marriage. We may have theory of reading literature. <laughs> but here there is a theory of marriage. That it was something you should dip in and out uh, of as required. So whenever you want to be, be there and then you can easily get out of the marriage. This may sound uh, dismayingly practical, very cynical, but it wasn't. She loved her husband. And dipping out of marriage didn't mean adultery, rather it was a recognition of how marriage worked for her as a reliable ground uh, bass of life, uh, as something you jogged along with until such time as you needed to dip into for succor, expression of love and the rest. I could understand this approach. There is no point demanding more than your temperament requires or provides. So that that what she tells that well you remain in a marriage happily, but if you want to have an affair with somebody, you can for a while have that also, and then again come back into your marriage. And so that that is how is a better way yeah, that theory. Now this is uh, when when Paul tells us this, the way it is represented, we think that well this is problematic thing, but this is actually what Paul is doing. This is actually what if Suzanne is there a married. Uh, a woman with two daughters and what is Susan doing with Paul? It is just doing uh, this, uh, dipping in and coming out of, uh, dip in and out of it as and when required. That is what is it doing. But well, the way it is told by the women friend is not so. Uh, it doesn't happen so. Once uh, the people are there in our life, they, they, they remain there forever in one or the another way. Sometimes with a wound also. That is what John has told. That people, it is not easy. Uh, like you can't even forget pets. How can you forget human beings? You, you get so attached with even the pets that dying of the pets also disturbs you. Then 
uh, uh, human beings coming in life, going out of life is not that easy. It doesn't happen in that way. And it never happens without a damage or a wound. And people have to live with those wounds and other things also there. So this way, uh, uh, this, but what we see here by and large is this that uh, the, the novel obviously do not have a, a kind of a, a positive way of looking at a marriage a, a, a institution. Uh, Julian Barnes is not going back as a solution that uh, uh, for all these problems that people are facing in life, Paul or Suzanne or anybody else, the problem is that they are not happy in the marriage or they might have relied on the marriage institution that might have given the happiness. That is not the answer that Julian Barnes is giving. So obviously he's making a critic of uh, this very institution of marriage uh, uh, as such uh, in, in this novel or the earlier novel that is the sense of an ending uh, also. He is not uh, giving any kind of moral judgment on that. Uh, the beauty of uh, Julian Barnes is that he is not there to moralize us uh, that this is good or that is bad. Uh, being this might be ethically right and be, doing that might be morally wrong. Uh, so he is not going into all those things. He just tells that this is there. Uh, this is there. These are these people. Uh, they think about their life in this way. Uh, 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 and uh, uh, you can enjoy their life. Eh? You can perhaps share their life also. Maybe some such kind of things might happen in your life also. You may have your theory of your life. Eh? You, you, may, you may have your own question of responsibilities. But the, here are these people. They live this life and absolutely no moralizing eh? about whether this or eh? that. Just pondering upon, reflecting upon what happens in life eh? there. So that is uh, this. So uh, these are some of the concerns that uh, we see. And uh, uh, with this point, we uh, end our discussion of uh, 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 this novel also. Uh, we will have uh, questions. I will share the list of questions with you. And uh, maybe on the coming, uh, in the coming session, in the next class, uh, we will uh, discuss questions and answers also. So if you find some questions which are not discussed, or you are not able to comprehend those questions, then you can ask. So we can discuss something based on those questions uh, uh, also.